Hello world and welcome back to another episode of Industrial Foregoing. Today we're going to be going over all the things that you can do when it comes to mob generation. Specifically though, the hostile mobs. So the first thing we're going to want is actually the mob slaughter factory. And there's many reasons for this, but first off, did you know I had a discord? Join it down below. Now the reason we're going to want the mob slaughter factory is this is going to be our way of generating pink slime. And as we know from the first episode, Pink slime is going to be needed in order to make the advanced machine frame. So this is going to be a progression machine that we're going to need for this mod. Uh, but for today, we're going to be using it for other reasons. To make the mob slaughter factory, we need some iron swords, iron axes, plastic, golden gear, and the pity machine frame. So this is a tier one uh, machine. You can make it very early on. And this is going to have literally one function. It's going to be able to slaughter any mobs that are in front of it. It's going to it needs some power to work and it's going to have a progression bar and it's going to make either uh, liquid meat and pink slime. Now in here I have got some upgrades before we go over the upgrades let's demonstrate how this works. We can use pigs for this and when we just simply slaughter a pig as you see here it's going to instantly pretty much disappear. All that is is that the um, the slaughter factory is managing to uh, keep up with the rate of me actually killing things. It does help that I've got these upgrades. Now I've just got these simply being split up between the liquid meat on the right there and pink slime on the left here. So that's all that is and all we have it is like this. Uh, it's a little bit backwards though how I have it set up but it, it, it is working. <laughs> Trust me. And now this does have a working area. So if I select this, the reason this has such a large working area is that this has actually got the biggest upgrade in it. The range tier upgrade. By default, it will just be this one square, which is why I was putting it directly in front of it. Still works just as fast, but obviously if, if, if anything goes out of it, it will stop working. The reason I wanted to go over this is because today we're going to go over the add-ons as well. The add-ons are very easy to make, go ranging from tier 1 to tier 12 when it comes to range. These are all made in the disillusion chamber, they all require latex. However, all, they ch all the only change that really goes on in here is that you're going to be replacing the cobblestone with something different. So the glass and the redstone, as you see, is the same, but then we just need these four items. Now, depending which four items you have depends on the tier. So if we go into our add-ons here, uh, just flicking through them to go from 1 to 12, all you need is cobblestone, lapis, bone meal, go uh, iron nuggets, copper, gold nuggets, iron ingots, gold ingots, quartz, diamonds, popped chorus fruit and then emeralds to get range 12 that's all that is now besides that you have three upgrades as well that are have multiple tiers we've got the speed the efficiency and the processing each of these do a different thing one and all of it adds it up by basically one respectively to its level the speed upgrade is going to increase the rate of progress bar uh, advancing per tip so what do I mean by this? If I take these out very quickly, you see this progress bar, it has a, it says five second ETA. However, as this does its craft, as it does its craft, it's going to increase the speed that it actually takes. So now it's doing it every one second. And that's because it's, it's think of it like warming up. So if we've managed to put a speed um, upgrade in here, plus one, what that does is that this increase, this increases it by one more process so virtually skipping a process and then speed upgrade tier two almost skips the process twice over if that makes sense so it's it just increases this rate of warm-up essentially then we've got the efficiency tier this is going to decrease the amount of ticks is needed for an operation so this is the physical speed of this here as well so as you see the progress there is a uh, hundred that's essentially the amount of ticks so instead of it needing a hundred ticks if we put an efficiency it's going to decrease it by 10 percent and if you put in an efficiency two it's going to decrease it by um 20 percent so if i put one of these in here this shouldn't take 100 ticks it now takes 90 and then if i put the tier two in here it now only takes 80 after it's done an operation uh, that's not efficiency that's efficiency there you go now it only takes 80 so it speeds up once again the last thing we have is the processing one the processing tier one and tier two and what this does is it increases the amount of operations that are done once the process is completed so it's almost like another speed tier again um, but what it is is essentially once this progress bar completes down to zero that is essentially one operation however if we put a tier one processing chip in here when this progress bar gets to zero, it's actually going to do the operation twice. So if there's two pigs in front of it, it's going to do them both at the same time. Then if we do the uh, tier two, that's essentially going to be like this is doing three operations. So if there's three pigs in front of it, it's going to do three pigs at the same time. 
So you can get this to basically be done in 80 ticks every roughly every two seconds. So every 80 ticks warmed up very quickly once it needs to get going and then uh, it can do three operations at once. That's how that works. Besides that, you have the range upgrades. Now to quickly go over how you actually make all of these since uh, it doesn't really take too much here. Uh, they're all again made in the dissolution chamber. As you see here, it just takes sugar, gold um, gears, uh, glass and redstone. And then for tier two, all you need is diamond gears. Then for efficiency, it's going to be blade rods and gold and then obviously diamond. And then you're going to need processing, which is going to be crafting and furnace with gold gears. And then for diamond gears to get the tier two. So all of them are very, very quick to make. You can get every add on pretty much from the very beginning of the game since uh you know the biggest add-on you can get for range all you need is emerald so you don't even have to go to the end like you do with a range tier 11 so a bit of a strange one that i'm surprised no netherites in here as well but that's that now quickly going back to this mob slaughter factory you do not have to use passive mobs you can use um regular uh angry hostile mobs that's the word i'm looking for however with passive mods you do get more generation you will get more out of uh, pink slime and more liquid meat if you use passive mobs so we are going to be demonstrating this later on we're using hostile mobs but you can use passive and there are ways of automating passive mobs as well but that'll be in a later tutorial but anyway let's move on into my little chamber here into my little abode this is where we're going to be actually using some of this pink slime or, or sorry liquid meat this liquid meat in here we have got the craft for some mechanical dirt this is made with two uh, rotten flesh, two dirt, and a pity machine. Now, I have got this built in here, but it does not have to be this way. This can be a shaped, this is a shapeless craft, so any of these can be in any position. And this makes mechanical dirt. A mechanical, mechanical dirt is essentially going to be sort of like a powered spawner. Now, what we have here is still the mob slaughter factory, and that's because the mechanical dirt, it requires liquid meat to actually function. It does require power as well. And as you can see, we've got plenty of upgrades in here up to a thousand. And this does not actually take a range upgrade. Basically, if you don't see a working area button, a range upgrade won't work. You can put one in here, but it doesn't actually do anything. So in here, we just got the speed upgrade, efficiency upgrade and processing upgrade. And then all we have to do is simply turn the lights out. Let's turn this off and as you can see they start spawning directly on top of this block now in here i've got this set to a large area as you can see just so it takes up the whole rooms because they can wander around a bit and then all i'm doing is storing this pink uh pink slime just so this doesn't back up and stop working now this does take a heck of a lot of power this is why i've got three pitiful generators on here and i'm having to use mechanism cables because as we know in industrial foregoing uh, there is no actually transfer of power via cables, which is really, really annoying. But that's basically how this works. We now have an automated way of getting pink slime for any cross we want to do, and also getting um, loads of liquid meat. Now that's great and all, but what is the point of getting automatic uh, liquid meat and getting automatic pink slime? Well, for pink slime, as I said earlier, this is going to be our progression into the next tier, which is advanced machine frames, which require all the items here and some pink slime. Very simple stuff. We've done this and seen this sort of basically in the previous episode. But what we can do with this is with your advanced machines, we can make a couple of new machines, one of which being the mob duplicator. Being some magma cream, some nether warts, plastic emeralds, and some redstone, this duplicator is going to be our way of actually making ourselves essentially a powered spawner. All we need to do is put inside here a mob imprisonment tool with a very specific uh, mob inside of it, depending on what you want your spawner to be. Now to get the imprisonment tool you're going to need a ghast here and some plastic and this is essentially a way of actually getting any item or any mob in the game stored inside of this imprisonment tool so what i have here is one ahead of time this guy has a skeleton inside as you see here and when he is inside you have a little bit of a color above here saying that showing that there is going to be a mob inside of it and it tells us what it is and how much health it has as you see this one has 17. What you'll then have to do is put your uh, mob imprisonment tool inside of here. And now this duplicator is going to be actually able to spawn skeletons. Now, what we could do, obviously, is using uh, a pig here. What we could do is actually use a passive mob if we wanted to. So we can use this for food or we could use this to, again, make more liquid uh, meat and pink slime if we so wanted to, because obviously we get more out of it doing it that way. Uh, besides that you have all the usual upgrades if we show this as you can see there is a little bit of a block gap so you can hide this in the floor here and then with the add-ons we can obviously make this 
very big if we wanted to, as you see here. So you can make this spawn in a very, very large area. It's completely up to you. Now, the only caveat to this is that we need obviously power, but we're also going to need something called essence. Essence is going to be a brand new liquid to us today, and that is going to be actually crafted through killing mobs. It's going to be your XP, essentially. So there are multiple ways of getting XP into this. However, to start, you're going to need to do use a brand new machine if you're using purely industrial foregoing. If you're using other mods, there's going to be different ways of getting um, essence in there. But purely through industrial foregoing, we're going to need a brand new machine again, also using the advanced machine frame. And this is going to be the mob crusher made with some books, some gears, um, iron sword and plastic. This guy is going to be essentially a killing machine. It's going to kill things very similarly, similarly to the mob slaughterhouse or mob slaughter factory. Sorry. However, this is going to have a specific cutter in mind. All this is going to do is kill mobs. It's going to give us um, mob drops as well as essence. So this needs to work hand in hand with our mob duplicator in order for it to work. Now, the problem is, I believe it depends on what type of mob you end up killing. But with skeletons, having one crusher and one duplicator and with the amount that spawn, the one crusher is not actually going to be enough to supplement the amount of essence that's going to be used for actually generating skeletons. So I have over here a quick setup where we have our duplicator in here. This is working away. And then we actually have our crusher on the back here. It has some items inside. So what I need to do is actually get some essence into this. So if I just simply place this, uh, not in there, sorry, in the back, there you go. If I just start bucking in some essence in there, we can hear that these guys are already spawning as you see, which is lovely. Now this thing is going to be killing them. As you see, it's going to have this process. We can obviously put some add-ons in here. So if we get ourselves the uh, speed two, efficiency two, and processing two, as you can see, this killing and generating essence. Now I have this automatically piping through um, with essence into here, but we're not actually going to be killing enough to keep the essence going. So we want to supplement this, which is what my last two farms over here. They're a very good setup, especially for early game. However, before we go into the ultimate setup, um, let's just go into one more block, which is the mob detector made with some comparators, repeaters and observers and a simple machine frame. This is a detector block that will simply detect how many mobs are standing in front of it and it will give it a redstone signal depending on how many mobs it sees in front of it. So if I turn off this crusher very quickly, uh, yeah, just like so, this is going to keep spawning mobs if I give it a little bit more essence here. This is going to keep spawning mobs and I have a detector here as you see and this is generating more and more power depending on how many mobs we are seeing so we're only seeing four five at the top there is it going to go up to six there you go six so the more mobs we have in here the uh the more it's obviously going to spawn now this also does have a working area however it isn't actually showing it to me for whatever reason uh and that, so this also has a range upgrade as well so you could have this as a massive range um, as you see here and then even if we had loads more mobs it could be any types of mobs they do have to be on the same level but if we have loads of mobs just like that this goes a little bit higher but when i say what is the best way of actually doing it this is what i mean you are going to want to basically have two different farms going one of which is basically a very good version of the mechanical dirt and the mechanical dirt in here the only thing that's happening inside of here is literally we are using the slaughter factory to make liquid meat and pink slime now we want to be making this pink slime we can just store we can do whatever we want with it we can actually use pink slime later for very specific things but for right now we want the liquid meat liquid meat is going to go to all four of these mechanical dirts as you see here to generate ourselves plenty of passive mobs however then what i'm doing is because this isn't actually giving us mobs uh drops and essences we over over here we have our new setup Underneath here, we've got our duplicator with our imprisonment tool, and this is spawning in this all large area. Uh, but we are supplementing this with our mechanical dirt. So we are going to get extra drops that we don't really want, but it's the best way of us getting enough essence from the one mob crusher to keep our duplicator working. So all we need to do is from our first farm, make the liquid meat to supplement our duplicator one that we have over here. So what I have from this is we want to get all our blocks out of here, obviously. So I just simply have that piping to some barrels. And then you can obviously do this better with other mobs. But using purely industrial foregoing, we've got these piping into personal chests. Personal chests are from Mechanism, but it's basically just a large storage thing. Uh, you can use the regular chest, but I just wanted something large to get plenty of items in here. Now, from the get-go, I've got what we are trying to collect, which is obviously bones and arrows. As you can see, we've just had this running since the uh, episode started, and we're already at nearly 4,000 on each of these. 
Now from there, you want to be filtering out um, with our little item transporters here. What we have in here is, oops, oh no, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> what I did in here is I have actually, I did blacklist arrows and we had this on regulation mode as well. So we just want to blacklist that and we had this with bones as well. So that way, bones can't go through here. Oh, and we want rotten flesh. This way, none gets sl none slip through the cracks, obviously. So that blocks these three items, and they all go to the next one. And then I've done the same thing because we're going to get some of these items. Uh, Imperium Essence isn't from this mod, though. Uh, that's from Mystical Agriculture. And then I filter it again to keep some redstone and some string. And then I'm just literally voiding the rest with a trash can. Now, you can do this a better way, obviously, with pipes and stuff, as many people would have in mod packs. But in industrial foregoing as well, there is also conveyor belts. Now, conveyor belts, we're not going to go over today because that's going to take its own video. But uh, that will be a better way of sorting this as well. But we've just covered the uh, item transporters before. So this is a not very simple way, but a good way of sorting things out and getting plenty of items what you need. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be everything when it comes to actually dealing with mobs. As you can see, it's not that complicated, and from here, you can now go into Tier 3 Machines. So, if this video helped you out in any way, shape, or form, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. It would really help me out, and ring the bell button to stay notified when these videos go live. And if you haven't already, join the Discord, link down in the description. And until next time, guys, take care.